What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about why people are poor and money has nothing to do with it. I know that sounds crazy. I know that sounds a little strange, but we're going to dive into why people are poor and the generational curses that continue to lead people to be poor, to not have any money, to be struggling to be trying to make their way in life. Also, I'm going to do a training. I'm going to put a link below on how to sell online. It is one of the easiest ways for you to make extra money or even a full time income. Plus, I've got, of course, your first company that we're getting into the links below. The first part of the training is free. And then this uh, training, like I said, I may do it for 100, 150 bucks, but that link will be below. All right. So let's talk about why people are poor. The first thing is that you would say is they don't have money. And that is part of it. That is a very, very small part of it. Let me tell you a story of some people that I know years and years ago, I used to be in the military and I was working with this. Well, I used to work in the lab and I was real chatty. You know, I would talk up to patients and stuff. So I, there were some people who had to come back repeatedly for their lab work and I got to know them. And one of these patients was a school teacher who was in the military and he got some kind of disability, so he got out. So he still got to keep his military benefits, even though he was a school teacher, because he was no longer in the military. And we were starting to talk. And this man, who was a school teacher, he and his wife, who was also a school teacher, they never made more than $25,000 per year. Now, this is in the 80s, they were school teachers. And one of the things that he, he was sitting around, he was like, you know, one day, I told my wife, we need to get into real estate and my wife agreed. So what we did is we lived on my income and we saved up all of her income to buy rental properties. And at the time, this man was probably in his 60s when he was telling me this. And at the time, they had 15 rental properties that were paid off. They were paid off and he was getting ready to retire. His wife had already retired and they had more money than they knew what to do with. Now, that sounds like a really simple story, but it is a prime illustration of wealth building behavior. See, this is one of the things that you guys have got to understand to build wealth. You must operate in the vacuum of surplus. So by living on his salary and taking her salary and investing it, they got rich, even though they never made a lot of money from their job. See, th this is, this is the key. I'm also gonna tell you another story of someone I used to work with years and years ago. There was this girl, she was a medic, a medical, a certified nurse tech, um, medical assistant, whatever they are. And her father, taught her when she was young to save money. Once again, on YouTube, you will see many people talking about savers or losers. You'll see videos talking about take your money out the bank. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit later. But if you're in income danger zone, number one, having liquid assets, cash money in the bank is the best thing you can do. So he taught her, you know, she got a job and he says, you live with me and your mom, we got you. You should save all your money. So from the age of 16 until I think I met her when she was 31, she'd been saving money really now. She didn't, and here's the thing. She didn't make a lot of money. She didn't make a lot of money. Okay. I made like twice what she made, but she had more money in the bank than I did because she had the habit of saving money. And she paid cash for her cars. And when she bought her first house, she put half down on her first house. 
So she had a low mortgage, she had no car payments, and you know, she had a little bit of an attitude because she had attitude money. She had money in the bank and she didn't have a lot of bills, all right? I'm gonna tell you another story. And the, 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 these are people who've influenced me. There was a guy in the military, name was George Fook. Fook used to save 95% of his income. Once again, none of the people that I talked about, George paid cash for his car. Because George was like, I have a place to stay. I get to eat for free. He just saved all his money. So out of these three examples and the, I believe, because you know, we never got into the specifics of what kind of houses, the cost of houses. Uh, I do remember he told me that on their fifth or sixth house, they were getting to the point where they were able to pay cash for houses because the rent from the houses and her income enabled them to pay cash for, I think around the fifth or seventh house, he started, they started paying cash for houses. And he said the real estate agents would look at them like they had four heads because they couldn't believe that these two simple people had that kind of money. So I tell you these stories to illustrate to you why people are poor. None of these people, I do believe with the 15 houses, this guy was a millionaire. But like I said, we didn't really get into specifics and numbers, so I really don't know. But I do know that this guy, you know, at the time, the hottest car was that Volvo, the Volvo, the Volvos. They were hot back then. And he had a brand new Volvo and his wife had a brand new Volvo and they paid cash for him. And they lived in the house that was paid off and they, they had their rental properties and they were and they, they were getting pensions. They weren't getting the 401k, they were getting pensions and he had his military retirement. So they were rolling in money. And one of the things I, I, I illustrate to you that the reason that people are poor isn't because they don't have money, it's because they had bad money behaviors. Because I, I have another friend who makes 500,000 a year she and she spends every penny of it i remember we were out to lunch and i knew how much she made and you know she took me to lunch so she was going to pay and her credit card got declined and then she tried to run another one and her credit card got declined again so i just pulled out my credit card and paid the lunch bill and she's like yeah it's gotten a little tight she makes five hundred thousand dollars a year and she is struggling to pay her bills she has bad money allocation behavior see the reason that people are poor isn't because like in the case of the med tech she was making nine bucks an hour and she had a paid off car and a paid off motorcycle and she put half down on her house because she learned how to manage her liquid assets. See, once again, I'll give you another illustration. You'll take a person who would win the lottery and, just, and don't take my word for it, check it out. Typically these people are in worse financial situations five and seven years after winning the lottery than they were before winning the lottery. Why? Financial behaviors. Financial behaviors, like when, you know, I'm not trying to brag or boast, but I got enough money to pay all of my bills. I had that money in the bank last year. That's typically how I run my budget. It's like, I try to make enough money and then I allocate it for this year. So it doesn't really matter what my business does or doesn't do. I can, I know I can pay my bills. And once again, I don't have a lot of bills. I don't have a lot of bills. So I got like 40 credit cards and I treat the ones that I use pretty much like a debit card. So I don't carry any balances. I, I don't have a lot of bills. And th this is one of the things because if you compare me to the average person, the average person has a car payment. The average person has student loans. The average person has credit card debt and they have rent or mortgage. <clears throat> so when their paycheck comes in, 
it goes right back out. Whereas when I get paid, because you know, I pay myself at my company, you know, I got paid the 14th. That money is still in my personal checking account. It didn't have to leave to go pay bills. It is sitting in my personal checking account because I don't have a lot of bills and I don't really spend foolishly. And once again, you look at the mentality and the behavior. So that's part of the reason that people are poor, part of the reason. Now there are good, hardworking people out there who go to work every day, do what they need to do, and they just don't make a lot of money. And this is where we're getting into the other part. When you're growing up, or I don't know what they're telling kids today. I don't have kids. I don't know what they're telling kids. I know when I was growing up, it was like, you could be whatever you want to be. That was some of the worst advice you could ever give a kid. Because typically, like I would give you an example of how I made a mistake with my career path. When I graduated high school, I joined the delayed entry program from the military and they used to come pick us up, I think, once a month and take us out to dinner and talk about joining the, the military, right? ASFAB, that's the test you have to take for the military. I scored so high, the guy said, you can pick any job, you know, he just opened up his computer and I picked laboratory specialist. If I had been thinking, I would have picked nuclear medicine or I would have picked, uh, I forget what they're called, these security communication. Uh, these guys, because I was stationed at Fort McPherson, and all of the guys who were in the communication security, I forget what they were doing, but they all got out and got jobs at Sprint. Um, I mean, you know, and this is in the 80s. They got 50 and 60 and 70 thousand dollar jobs because of their skill set in the military of doing it was encryption. It was security. It was it was some really high level stuff. I could have had that. I could have had that, but I didn't know any better. And this is one of the reasons that people are bored is because it's like, go out, pick this job. And typically the jobs you get, you get based upon your environment. You don't really, no one sits down and says, hey, you know what? You can make $100,000 a year if you do X. No one ever gives you that conversation. So pretty much from high school, we're all kind of flying blind. It's just like the message is go to college, get a degree. Now the messaging, you know, in recent years has changed. It's like go to college, get a STEM degree. But when I was growing up, there was no guidance. There was no help. There was no insight. There was nothing. There was nothing. And I feel that many of your experiences were the same. There was nothing. So you just went ahead and you figured out something you got a job and then you start reproducing. You met this woman you had some kids, you got married. And next thing you know, you bought a house and you're on this track and no one ever tells you that you could create a business that you, no one ever tells you this because people, and this is why I'm doing this training on how to sell things online because people don't understand the mechanics of making money. I have not been a full-time online reseller since 2008. But when I go online, because, you know, I literally, between eBay, Craigslist, and Amazon, I probably have sold, I've probably had over 100,000 transactions of selling stuff. So with that, there's patterns and stuff and there's things. and. I'll give you an example. I had a iPhone 12 that I was selling on eBay. I, I, there was a high number and there was a low number and most of the phones were selling for the low number. And I was able to sell my phone for $800. I got, got one of the high numbers and I'm going to teach you how to do this stuff because you know, selling stuff online is the easiest way that you can make money. If you know how to do it, if you're just a 
unseasoned, unprofessional salesperson and you just throw some stuff on Craigslist, throw some stuff on Facebook Marketplace and don't have any rhyme or reason. Yeah, because, you know, uh, I, I'm selling wrecked cars on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, so far, Craigslist has been the better place to sell cars for me. I've sold, I've sold one wrecked car on Facebook Marketplace and the other two I sold on Craigslist. So Craigslist is leading and the Craigslist, you know, it's just an easier sell for me. But once again, people are poor because of their behavior. That's the, the key. It's all about behavior. And also in my video, which is some reason took off uh, black money talking about living in the um, low rent district. That is a form of behavior. Hear me and hear me well. If you are a parent, the last thing that you want to do is move to the low rent district because you're picking your children's girlfriends and boyfriends and their friends and their lifelong associates. So if you move your kids to a resource deficient environment, there's, there's going to be a bunch of people there who have no resources. I got a friend who grew up rich and has a rich person network. And my friend fell upon hard times. My friend was able to make three phone calls and get the money he needed from people he already knew because he grew up in a resource rich environment. How many of you can call up someone and say, hey, I need 100K? Very few of you, very few of you. My friend was able to raise $350,000 off three phone calls because he grew up in a resource rich environment. So if you're a parent, you do not want to bring your kids up in a resource deficient environment because you are setting the stage for their future. I cannot emphasize how critical this is. I'm not saying just go out and get the most expensive place you can. You want to be in the best neighborhood that you comfortably can afford. And you want to avoid living in the hood because what this does, your kids, your kids around their peers more than they're around you. So their peers will influence them and this will drop the wealth, the, the, the behavior. Like if everyone your kid hangs out with is the product of a single parent and everyone's struggling, they're going to have similar stories, similar experiences, similar conversations. I remember years ago when I moved out here, and I was at Waffle House and I was having a conversation with this guy and we were talking about holding companies. See, I can go virtually anywhere around here at a restaurant or something and I will run into someone who owns a company and that's my environment. I'm in a resource rich environment and we were just chopping it up about holding companies and stuff and consistently I've been out here 12, going on 14 years, and consistently just going out to lunch, running to someone in a restaurant because there's a concentration of business owners out here. And one of the things is, it's the environment. Because when you look at poor people and you look at, you know, going in to bring up Jordan Peterson, people hate when I bring him up because they want to go ahead and talk about his uh, so-called issues. But the thing is, when you look at the average trajectory of a poor person, number one, another, and this is, this is going to kind of hurt. A number one reason that people are poor is having kids without being married. I know that, 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 that hit a lot of y'all, you know, I'm, I'm just, I'm here to bring you the truth. This is what happens. You don't have a career, you don't have an established way to get money, and then you go out and you start reproducing. 
Next thing you know, you marry this chick, you know, buy a house, and then you're on this treadmill. See, there was no plan. Because, you know, I know this sounds a little crazy, because if I ever get married again, and I ever have any more children again, there will be a plan for them before they're born. And this is, and I know that sounds kind of crazy, because it's just like, hey, we get married, you know, we're, we're having sex, she gets pregnant, and these, you know, essentially, you're kind of pulled into this situation. But one of the things, and like I said, I'm gonna say it again, one of the biggest reasons that people are poor is having children without being married. I was dating this chick who is pretty smart, and she said, being a single mother is the fastest way to poverty that I know. Fastest way to poverty. And one of the things that happens with this, because you know, I'm not trying to be moralistic. I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to say don't have sex. What I'm saying is do not have children without being married. And also to my men folk, you need to go ahead and get yourself established before you get someone pregnant. And what do I mean by establish? You need to have a career, not a job. Working at Walmart is a job. Working at Amazon in the uh, warehouse is a job. Being a plumber is a career. Being a carpenter is a career. Being an electrician is a career. Being a data scientist is a career. You want to have a career versus a job because a career gives you way more options and you know you want to get yourself established and you want to get this stuff set up because you know as i addressed in the video black money the pathology of the black community has spread there's always been extremely poor white people uh the wonderful whites of west virginia that video is here on youtube check it out it will blow your mind and when you start to look into the behavior, because this is what moved me from being a regular person to being wealthy. And there are many videos that will tell you not to do this. Learning how to save money. The average person doesn't have, I think 75% of the country doesn't have $1,000 that they can get their paws on for an emergency in 30 days. Why? And let's go ahead and look at this. We all grew up with parents. You know, some of us had extremely great parents. Some of us had crappy parents. So, but at one point you were living somewhere rent free. And if you had a job, that was the time to establish these prodigious saving habits. Because I'm gonna tell you, to become an investor, you need to learn how to save. What, what does saving do? Saving teaches you how to manage your money. Uh, I'm getting ready to relaunch Savage Finance and some financial training and stuff because it is needed. It is needed. Because one of the things that I consistently see, because let me just go ahead and share a little insights with you. If you notice that the thumbnails are black with white writing, I'm not creating these clickbait thumbnails. I'm not creating these thumbnails with these strange expressions or my eyes bugling out my head. I'm giving you real factual information. And since I've made that change, I am drawing a better crowd. I'm drawing like, some of the comments are so intellectual, it just literally blows my mind. I'm drawing a different type of viewer that I'm extremely grateful for because you know, we're starting to cook with some gas. And one of the things that, cause you know, uh, to go a little deep, um, one of the reasons that YouTube, I did a training last night explaining why YouTube isn't the best place to get any type of advice. And I'm trying to change that because I want to give you guys actionable advice, insights, and with my training. But one of the, since I made the change, the channel has started growing. I've got like a different crowd. I'm getting different, you know, and like, thank you. Thank you guys. I really appreciate it. So when you examine the behavior or the pathology of poor people, 
whether it's poor black folks or it's poor white people. The pathology is the same. Number one, low educational achievement is consistent. I met this girl and we were dating and I, I just kind of noticed that she was clever, but there was just some, some stuff that was off. And as we started to get to know each other and go through things, she tells me that she dropped out of high school. I was alarmed. I've never dated anyone that had dropped out of high school. And then her life was chaotic. Her life was chaotic because when you have low educational attainment, you seriously limit yourself. You would be shocked at the number of people who are dropping out of high school today. It would literally blow your mind. And these people are crippling their futures, crippling their futures. Because if you look at the pathology of low income, low achievement, low education, you just see these same things over and over and over again. I guarantee you the guy who broke my window probably dropped out of high school. Because what happens is you create this situation because a lot of jobs, if you didn't graduate high school, they won't hire you. <laughs> it just won't. So once you drop out of high school, you set the die for being in poverty the rest of your life. Just dropping out of high school. Now, if you drop out of high school and then you have children, what you have done has created the second generation of people living in poverty. <clears throat> I remember having conversations with my mother. My mother was actually quite smart, but she, she wasn't the bravest person in the world. Uh, she had an opportunity. If you didn't know, McDonald's had a program where they would go to the black community and McDonald's would take bright people and they would set up a McDonald's for you. They would set it up, give you the money. And my mother had a chance to be in this program and she didn't want to do it because she was scared. I was pissed. I was like, we can have McDonald's every day. We can have burgers. I, Cause I, I was a kid and I was looking at, if we had a McDonald's, we would have McDonald's and Big Macs every day, you know? I didn't understand that that move that my mother made was rooted in her financial pathology. See, when you grow up, and once again, um, my mother, you know, a little history. My grandfather, Sumner Cameron, married my grandma, Maddie Cameron, after he had married Catherine. Ka he had five kids from Catherine and Catherine had died. My grandfather was significantly older than my grandmother, like 20 years older than my grandmother. And then they had my mother. So my mother grew up spoiled because my grandfather, he, he owned a barbershop, he was an entrepreneur, he, he had a little money. And once my, um, unfortunately my grandfather the way that I can piece it together, because you know, it's people, when you're a kid, people don't want to tell you anything. But my grandfather committed suicide. And I, I think that just completely messed up my mother because she wowed out. She wowed out. And she got on this path of, you know, once, as long as my grandmother was alive, we were financially stable. Once my grandmother died, it just went to hell. It just went to hell. So the pathology that you have as a child will influence your whole adult life. My mother never had money from the time I was born until the time that she died. She never had money. I remember I used to go visit her and we would have these conversations and she could not understand what I was doing. She could not understand because I, I remember I went to visit her and I showed up in a brand new BMW. And she was like, 
that's your car? She was absolutely shocked that I owned that car. And she was absolutely shocked that I had paid cash because I was a weird little kid. And I looked at my mother's financial behaviors and I assiduously went the other way. And this is kind of one of the reasons I'm the way this, I like literally, sometimes I go two or three weeks and I don't spend money. I know that sounds strange because, you know, like I said, uh, I'm not showing any more receipts. I'm not, I'm not, like, all that stuff was doing was just making me a target. But I have a lot of financial discipline. You can give me a hundred K and I can hold on to it. You can give me a million, I can hold on to it. I don't have this urge to spend, to flex, to floss. It's just not in me. And part of this is I was homeless. I know what being homeless feels like. I know what being hungry feels like. I know what it's like to wake up in a car and I am never, ever going back. And I didn't even get there because I had bad financial habits. I got there because of just a serious events. And th this is one of the reasons that the income danger zone number one is so precarious. All it takes is one or two things to go bad and you could be homeless. One or two one or two things to go bad to be home. This is why I plan my life. This is why like, you know, you've never heard anyone on YouTube talk about they got enough money in the bank to allocate for their personal spending for the year. You, you don't hear people talk about that because everyone is trying to floss and flex and all this other stuff. And I'm about being secure. I, I'm just like, I am not going to be homeless again. I refuse. I absolutely refuse. And these financial behaviors I learned, like once again, you got to learn how to save, AKA manage money. And now there's a many, many videos on YouTube that will talk about savers or losers. You should put your money in the stock market. Okay, let's have this conversation. 160 million people in the workforce, okay? 80 million make less than 30,000. So half of the people in the workforce unless they have extremely good financial behavior, such as this um, medical assistant woman, they have no money to save. 75% of America struggles to have a thousand dollars in the bank. What money are they going to invest? See, this information, it sounds good. Don't put your money in the bank, you know, and like, once again, I'm not going after any YouTubers anymore, you know, because people get all pissed off. But I'm here to tell you that a lot of the advice you get on YouTube is 100 percent garbage. If you're an in income danger zone, number one, you should have a long term emergency fund. You should have a short term emergency fund. You should have a family operating account. Now, why two emergency funds? You have your long term emergency fund. You have your short term emergency fund. Your short term emergency fund is to protect your long term emergency fund from financial erosion. Because I want you to think. Unless you are a slap rock, your life pretty much is the same day to day. Unless you get sick or you have some e extracurricular intervening event, your life's pretty much the same. And during that sameness is the time to stack money. That's the time to stack money because when you look at, you know, racism and a lot of people had a problem with my a AG Gaston video. All right. I feel that if you're using racism as a reason that you don't have any money, you are punking out because AG Gaston became a millionaire during the period when Emmett Till was killed for whistling at a white woman. See, here's the thing, and this is why I'm going to have these conversations and these classes about money. First of all, if you like this, this is going to be kind of crazy. There's a woman, you can Google it, uh, Ruby Red. She sells period panties. This black woman became a millionaire selling period panties. You know, I'll be putting this up in the classes and in the training and stuff, because one of the things that you guys have got to understand is the mechanics of making money. 
a lot of people, I see a lot of people are financially pressed. And this is why there's a ton of videos on YouTube talking about a CPN, which is an alternative number you can use in place of your social security to get credit. Um, once again, once you understand credit, once you have the proper financial behaviors, your credit will never go bad. In 2019, I had a heart attack. My credit didn't go bad. I did not lose anything because I was prepared for that event before it happened because I had money in the bank. I had good credit. I didn't have a lot of bills. This, this is one of the things. You don't want to have a whole bunch of bills. Like, I got a few credit cards that have an annual fee and I kind of get pissed when that comes up because for 11 months, I don't have to make a payment on that credit card until I have to pay that annual fee. And I'm just sitting there like, ah, uh, am I gonna get rid of this credit card? Uh, I got rid of the American Express because I'm not traveling and 700 bucks is a lot. I just wouldn't really be utilizing the card. I may get it back once things open up, but once again, is you know, uh, this is why I'm going to bring Savage Finance back and I'm going to start doing educational courses. I'm going to start doing um, a lot of different training because people need it. People need it because when you look at why people are poor, just to be super simple, simplistic, it's the behavior. This is why people are poor. It is the behavior. First, the lack of saving money, the lack of allocating money. And um, once again, I got a free training where you should have the five checking account blueprint. You should have that because once again, if, and I'm gonna talk to you, if you had some you know, exceptional parents, you had a mom and a dad and your dad sat you down like this chick who was the medical assistant dad said, look, you know, we got you. You know, we're gonna feed you and everything you should save every penny of your job. This will, once you develop that behavior, you have to develop the behavior that can make you wealthy. Now, everyone wants to be a business owner so they can make more money. But here's the thing. If you still have bad money management behavior, if you're gonna mess up 30,000, you're gonna seriously trick out and mess up 300,000. You just got more money to mess up. You're not gonna get wealthy. Like my friend who makes half a million a year, who is struggling right now because she has very bad financial behavior. Very, very bad. And we've I've talked to her and I was like, look, let's do this. Let's just go ahead and put you on a budget. She don't have a budget. She just, money comes in, she spends it. Um, I feel that her credit cards have got cut off. You're making half a million a year and your credit cards got cut off. She's a fancy chick. She got the Louis, the Christian Louboutin boots, the Prada purses. This chick will drop 8K on a purse like nothing. Very, very bad financial behavior. Uh, yes, we briefly dated. And when I saw her financial behavior, I was like, doop, doop. I backed away. I backed away because this is the kind of chick that can bankrupt you. Uh, you know, she lives in a super splendid uh, apartment. She drives. Um, what is that? It's not the Lamborghini. It's the Alfa Romeo. She, she lives a very fancy life. Very, very fancy. Always on trips. Always. She never home. And, you know, when I meet a chick and I look at her financial behavior, if her financial behavior is like that, I'm out. Because it is so hard to change a person's financial behavior. It is so hard to get it. And this is why I'm telling you, and like there will probably be a part two and a part three, because, you know, we're just covering the basics because no one ever tells you, because essentially we have generation after generation after generation repeating the same cycle, because no one says, hey, this is what you should do with your money. 
And I can tell you, as a person who lives in a wealthy neighborhood, parents with wealth teach their kids different things than parents who don't have money. Uh, one of my neighbors, his kid has a stock portfolio. And he and his kid talk stock. This kid's got like a $400,000 stock portfolio. He's had it since he was six years old. He's 16. He's had it for 10 years and his parents have been giving him money and he's been managing his portfolio. So by the time this kid is 21, he's gonna have a million dollar stock portfolio. He's gonna be good when he's 60. Because, you know, once again, we'll be talking about the layers of wealth and stuff and all this other stuff, but once again, the reason people are poor is because of bad financial behaviors. That's it. It's not how much money you make. I gave you those stories of examples of people who didn't make enough. George Fook, he was in the military. He was an E4, uh, the medical assistant and the school teachers who actually got rich because they practiced good financial behaviors. All right, so that's all I got for you. Uh, the training will be below. I got to set that up and um, I will let you guys know. Let me know your thoughts and opinions of this and I will talk to you guys in the next one.